name is Travis Coleman with Microsoft. I'm the general manager for our Azure infrastructure business and our retail and consumer goods vertical. I'm here at Shop Talk 2025 today to talk about AI and retail, and I'm joined with Rachel Ramaswamy. Rachel, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, it's nice to be here. I'm Rachel Ramaswamy. I'm a leader within uh, Accenture Song, and for the last 10 years, I've been leading global product management for a company called Work & Co. We ideate, design, and develop the core uh, retail and digital applications for our clients around the globe. Great. So we've heard a lot of buzz, obviously, about AI over the last couple of years. And in retail in particular, you know, it's really kind of taking the industry by storm. And one thing I would be curious to get your perspective on is what is really the difference when we talk about agentic AI versus other AI use cases? Yeah, I think agentic AI is really the promise of AI that everyone talks about. Um, agentic AI essentially means autonomous AI. So it's AI agents who can conduct and automate tasks on behalf of users without human intervention. So if you think about pricing analysis, uh, promotions, inventory management, they can automate all of those tasks or automate things like personalization without the need for humans to conduct those sure. tasks from scratch, right? But they can also conduct those tasks with human in the loop. So they can uh, do all of the heavy lifting in terms of reaching into existing machine learning systems that retailers might already have, but make it easy for employees to essentially interact with those uh, systems using human conversational language. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think that, you know, the, with all that's going on with AI, um, some of the terminology, you know, gets confusing at times. So I appreciate you uh, yeah. giving that <laughs> distinction. If you can comment on, you know, what are some of the uh, use cases that you've seen okay. with agentic AI, specifically in retail, and how have yeah. they delivered success back to the business? So I, this might be controversial, but I would say that a lot of the promised hasn't been realized yet. So leaders in retail, the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Sainsburys of the world, they're exploring the ability to develop these autonomous agents to handle things like pricing, promotions, inventory, supply chain management. Um, those are the core use cases to solve for. I think what we see out the gate, especially with the third party agents, the enterprise agents on the market, whether it's through um, Salesforce Agent Force or Microsoft Copilot Studio, um, what we're seeing is the ability for those agents to be applied to the immediate use cases of marketing, customer service support, um, things like promotions or pricing support. Sure. But I think it's still very much early days where the impact hasn't yet fully been measured. Sure, got it, okay, thank you. So we know that AI can, can certainly help improve customer satisfaction. Um, can you give some best practices in terms of how organizations should look at, to deploy, knowing that trust is a key element and yeah. uh, maybe talk about that? Yeah, any organization that's implementing any sort of AI capability needs to think about responsible AI practices and essentially lawyer up. Think about how you're, how you're going to tackle that from both a user experience perspective, also an organizational perspective. And if customers or employees trust your tooling, they're gonna to adopt that tooling. Um, what we see is the ability to train the AI to come back with essentially citations or reasoning behind their recommendations. So if you've used um, Google recently, Google Gemini, which is now integrated into the main Google search homepage, if you, make a, if you do a search, right, the results that you're seeing come through from Gemini have cross-linking back to the sources that are uh, informing the results that Gemini is giving. Sure. That's a really simple example of how trust can uh, be brought to bear for an end user. Sure. So being able to cite your reasoning, being able to explain to the end user, these are the recommendations that we're making and why, I think goes a really long way. Do you think that because of that, it makes it feel more authentic to the... In, I think in, that's true, I think that's true. And if you think about agentic, right, you're also in most, in most cases thinking about employees, right? Employees that are using those tools within an organization. And so you want to build that trust and want to build that buy-in to the tools. So I think it's even more important, less that they wouldn't trust the responses, but more to show the value of what the AI is bringing. And sure. if you can tie it back to, hey, we're pulling this from this data source or this from this external study or this from this sort of uh, annual report that you put together a year ago, I think it builds that confidence sure. in the tool. Sure, sure. So across retail operations from 
uh, supply chain to customer service, you know, we're seeing this is being reshaped by by AI. That's right. um, how is it Accenture helping brands yeah. uh, integrate agentic AI and and do that transformation? Yeah. So at Accenture, we're in this unique position, right, where you're uh, working really closely with all of our client partners who typically have a pretty diverse technical and data landscape. And so what we're trying to do is to um, partner with them and developing our own suite of agents, essentially, that can plug into any enterprise data source. So it makes it easy for our clients to kind of put together a custom suite or almost like an agentic AI layer atop their, the sort of uh, very diverse range of enterprise platforms in which they play to fulfill those specific tasks that they have for their businesses. And so far, that suite of tooling supports use cases like insights, communications, merchandising, and our hope would be that we can continue to build that out over time. And part of the inspiration behind that has been to think about you know, especially for maybe customers who aren't yet working with Accenture, maybe smaller organizations. For some of those organizations, it's a wait and see, right? They might sure. be already plugged in to some major enterprise platforms, but they're waiting to see what agents those those uh, platforms are going to bring to market. Sure. And so it'll be interesting to see how that uh landscape unfolds and if these types of aggregation or suites of agents is what will ultimately emerge and how that will also speak to other agents, whether sure. it's um, Microsoft Copilot Studio or Agent Force. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, adoption is going to be key, obviously, um, in terms of, of driving success. You know, what are what are some steps that organizations can take to make sure that, that the yeah. adoption process is, in fact, smoother? Yeah. And when uh, everyone started talking about AI uh, in a big way around two years ago. The thing that we were all talking about then still is true now, which is it's all about data and data hygiene. You need to make sure you know where all your data lives, what shape it's in, how it's structured, what you need to do to clean it up. So that's by far number one. But when we're talking about um, agentic AI, you're also talking about workflow. Uh, organizational workflow. So understanding how your merchandising team interfaces with your product team, interfaces with inventory and supply management, the, the workflow that is unique to your org is really important and you need to map that out. In addition to that, as you're mapping that out, identifying advocates, because this is also about organizational change. Sure. It's not just, we're gonna create the agent and everyone is gonna use it. Yeah. You're gonna have to train everybody up, get them comfortable sure. using it, realize the value that it brings to their day to day. And in mapping that workflow, you can also identify those advocates. Sure. Um, and last but not least, going back to something we talked about earlier, responsible AI, you got to get legal involved. Yeah. You have to think about what risks are we willing to take? How are we going to test and learn into that responsible AI strategy and approach that we're going to bring? Because there's no one way. This is new sure. for that realm as well. And understanding what you need to do as an organization and what also the partners that you're bringing in to partner with you bring, I think is really important. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think, you know, without those pieces, it, it, kind of promotes that wait and see mentality, which is maybe slowing yeah. the adoption. Yeah, I think that's right. And it's also, it's a change is hard. No one's going to rush into change. Yeah, I think, I think that's a hard thing to do. But um, with all of the retailers and brands that I partner with, I think what we try to do is ease folks in, right? Sure. Like start really small, start small. And maybe that's a workshop where you build your own um, agent force agent, right? Yeah. Or helping to just play with other tools. I sure. think that there are ways to kind of ease the org into it that don't feel like you have to rip off the band-aid. Yeah. And we're seeing a lot of organizations that are having fun with hackathons or right. Shark Tank sorts of approaches to really yeah. spur innovation and adoption within the you know, yeah. organization. Yeah, I think so. that's right. So um, we're kind of coming to the end, but I'm curious, you know, as you look in the crystal ball and, and look out over the next few years, where do you see AI going? What kind of innovation do you see, especially in the retail yeah. space? I think in the retail space, I, I think I've been thinking a lot about browser-based agents and how that's going to disrupt the path to purchase for many of the retailers and brands that I partner with. Um, and at first, that can seem really scary, right? The idea of essentially agents that consumers might use to interact with your brand. You might think, oh, that's going to be the death of my, yeah. my e-commerce presence, right? But I think there's also this world that's going to emerge where um, the times in which customers interact 
with your digital platforms, with like come to your stores, sure. interact with retailers directly, all the more so that needs to be memorable, it needs to be innovative, it needs to be the moment you're developing a meaningful connection sure. with customers. So I think that'll be really interesting to see how that plays out and who wins that game, right? Like who's gonna come out with the most used uh, browser-based agent? I don't know, we haven't yeah. seen that yet. Those are just starting to emerge. So I think that's what we'll probably be talking about this time next year. Yeah, well, it's exciting for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.